There are five areas in the bubble editor that we see are constantly misunderstood. They're areas that we call out early on with our own clients so that they don't run into these misconceptions and understand how to use these features properly when they're building their bubble apps. The first is the visual element property is pressed. This is a built-in state that bubble has for clickable elements. When you click on a button, for example, you are going to temporarily hold down on your mouse clicker. And while you're holding down, the button is gonna be in the is pressed state. The moment you lift up your mouse clicker, it is no longer in the is pressed state. So is pressed is a yes or no value that literally means it is currently being pressed. Is pressed is not the same as has been clicked. It is only referring to in the moment if that button or text is currently being pressed. Placeholders are an area we often see people get mixed up with uh, their initial contents or their default values. Okay, you don't want to put your default value into the placeholder. The placeholder is just an area for you to put a piece of instruction text or an example value so that the user understands what the input is supposed to accept. So if you have an input where the user needs to type in their email address, you may say, enter your email here in the placeholder, or you may type in a, a fake email address as an example so they can see the format of what they need to type in. Okay, but if you have a placeholder in there that is dynamic, because yes, you can put dynamic expressions inside of the placeholder, it does not mean it's going to pre-populate the input with a value. You can have a placeholder in there and still have an empty input. So be careful with where you put your default values. Placeholders are not for that. Placeholders are specifically for that instruction text or that example value, and they're completely optional. You don't have to have a placeholder for all of your inputs. The next area is the on off toggle switch for conditions. When you set up a condition, Bubble has a, a little switch that you can turn on and off to help you preview what your condition is going to do. This on off switch has nothing to do with whether you want to enable or disable the condition for your users when they're running the page on the front end. This on off switch is simply a preview on or preview off for yourself as the app builder within the editor. The next area is referring to the result of a schedule API workflow action. And this goes for schedule API workflow, as well as schedule API workflow on a list. In subsequent actions of a workflow, if you refer to a previous step where that step is scheduling an API workflow, the result of that step has nothing to do with whatever's going on in that backend workflow. The result of that step instead is going to be the ID of the scheduled workflow. If you go into your logs and then into the scheduler tab within the logs, you're gonna see all of the scheduled workflows that haven't run yet. These are the things that are scheduled to run in the future. Bubble will show you a list of those. You'll also see that next to every individual scheduled item, there is an ID. This is something that Bubble generates for you. Okay, so you can save that ID to your database for in the future. If you want to cancel, you have something to reference programmatically. Okay, so again, referring to a scheduled action will not return any results or status updates or any data of any kind of whatever's going on in that backend workflow. It is simply just the ID of the scheduled item. The next area is something we see come up all the time with new bubble users who are mapping inputs to their database and workflows, right? For example, if I have, if I'm modifying a user and I want to update their first name field to an input where they would have typed in their first name, what we'll typically see is first name equals this user's first name, last name equals this user's last name. Guess what? That has nothing to do with your input. You're just referring to the same value within that record and saving it back to itself. You wanna make sure that you're actually referencing the input element that you've designed on the page. That is where the new value is being typed in. That is the thing that you want to capture and save to the record. 